<clears throat> well, <clears throat> I know you don't have a Bible with you tonight. Uh, here at Revolution Church, we, we study God's Word. It gives us hope. It's the truth. Uh, it's the way we're to live our lives, and we honor God by honoring His Word each and every time that we meet. And unfortunately, you don't have Bibles out, but some of you have fake Bibles, don't you? <laughs> you have phones. You can, you can reference some things if you'd like, but uh, I'm, I'll get you some, some Bible verses as we move along. Uh, but anyway, uh, it occurred to me in, in, in preparation for, for this week that Jesus Christ really is made up of, of four parts in this way. I'll, I'll say that there's the, there's the birth of Jesus. That's kind of what we're celebrating tonight, right? That's the Christmas part. So there's the birth, and then there's, the, of course, there's the death of Jesus, and then there's the, the resurrection of Jesus. That's a big one, right? That's when the rest of you come to church on that. I'm just kidding. Um, and, and, and so we need that. That's Easter. That's a big one. Then there's this ascension, right, where, where he ascends, right? So we've got the birth. Like, and, and so who's, whose favorite is the, is, and who thinks the most important part of the Jesus thing is the birth? Raise your hand. Okay, you got one. You got two. You got three. Okay, three, four. Uh, how many people think that it's the death of Jesus that's the most important thing? We got two, three, four, four. How about how about the resurrection of Jesus? Raise your hand. Well, wow, Easter's a big one, right? Yeah. So and 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 what about the ascension when he when he leaves after he res he's resurrected? He goes up and he sits up in heaven at the right hand of the Father, right? We got about well, maybe a dozen or so there. Well, they're all very very important, you know. It occurred to me that. That if, if the birth is the most important part, well, what, what if he was born to a virgin, right? That's a miracle. And what if he, what if he uh, never died? What good's the birth? You know, he doesn't stay in the manger, man. He's not baby Jesus from Ricky Bob, or Rick Talladega Nights forever. He, he's got to die to make the birth anything, right? But, but he can't die unless he's born. Right? And, and, and what, about, what about this resurrection thing? Well, he could be born, that'd be awesome, and he could die, that's awesome. But if he doesn't get resurrected, then there's something more powerful than him, and that means he's not God, and we're worshiping the wrong thing, right? So what good is the birth, and what good is the death without the resurrection? No good. Well, what about the ascension? See, wait, what if you had the birth? That's awesome, and you had the death, and it's finished, and he paid for your sins, and, and then he rose from the dead, so he's God, and, and, and he never ascended. Well, if he, if he doesn't ascend to the Father, then he can't do what he promised, which is to send his Holy Spirit to indwell you so that you can live the Christian life. Because if, if he was born and died and rose again, and you didn't have the Holy Spirit, you ain't no Christian. There, there's no provision for the flesh. There's no way to live the Christian life outside of the indwelling of Christ's Spirit. That's it. So they're all equally important. But this time of year, this time of year, we focus on baby Jesus. And, and I want to I do something. Um, I went and I looked in the Christmas story and all the Gospels and all that stuff. It's good. It's a good story. That's not where I want to do. And people in this church, you've come accustomed to that. <clears throat> but I found a verse. I want to share one verse with you tonight. One verse. And I love this verse because it really, it really encompasses all, the whole thing, the whole Jesus. If you're going to worship Jesus, you can't worship just Jesus in the, in the manger. That's just an insufficient Jesus. You can't just worship the Jesus on the cross. That's an insufficient Jesus. You've got to have all of it. You've got to have all that he is and all that he did to worship well. So tonight, that's what I want to do. I want to read one verse with you. It's a well-known verse. If you're a Bible reader at all, you know this one. It's Romans 5.8. It tells the story, the whole story. It says, But God showed His great love to us by sending Christ to die for us while we were sinners. See, that's the whole story. That's, you got to have all of it, man. you got to have all of it. Listen, <clears throat> I made, I'm going to make a promise to you. You may not like the songs that we're going to sing. When we get done, when I get done my message, I don't want to see any more fannies in seats. Okay? We're going to worship. Okay? No, we're, no, 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 no. We're going to worship. Okay? 
No more sitting down. This isn't the Lawrence Welk show. Okay, we're going to get up and we're going to give Jesus what is due. We're going to worship him. But you might not like the songs we're going to sing. I can't promise you that, that you're going to like it. You might not like that, those songs. You might think it's too loud. You might think it's too quiet. You might, you might not like the hot dog you got. You might not like the hamburger you got. Okay, I don't know what you like or don't like, but I can promise you one thing. You came to a place tonight. Listen up. You came to a place tonight where you are absolutely going to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and give you the opportunity to say yes to him and change your eternity right now, right here. Okay, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. So let, let's just do this right now, okay? It's not just the birth. It's not just the death. It's not the resurrection or the ascension. It's all of it. It's, it's the sent son sacrificed as a savior. It's all of it, okay? So let's just break this little verse down. It starts off with, but God. Okay, anytime you see that, something like, but God, or but you, or but you, it's always a response to the stuff that came before it, right? So it's all this stuff that came, but God. What is this stuff? Well, it says in that same section of scripture, when you were, listen up, utterly helpless. Okay, when you were utterly helpless. But God, in our brokenness, with sin and a massive debt that you have that you cannot pay, with an inability to fix this relationship, you have a deficit, you can't get there, you're insufficient. You're spiritually bankrupt. Every single person on the earth, including me, is spiritually bankrupt. You are utterly helpless. But God, this is who we are. This is who you are, right? That's who I was. And I don't know if you're that person anymore, but everyone is that way. Ephesians 2.1 would say once you were dead, See, it's not just you're in trouble. It's not like you're having a bad day. The Bible says that you were once dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. Colossians 2.13, similar verbiage. You were dead because of your sins. Can I ask you guys a question? Uh, What can a dead guy do? Uh, I can tell you one thing. You wouldn't go uh, uh, going into the graveyard to look for someone to play chess with, would you? Yeah, that's not going to happen. Well, let me tell you what he can do. Nothing. He can't do anything. He's dead. He's dead. Okay? Uh So so, so you have a problem. Look look at the person to your left. If there's nobody, look to to your right. And and just look at him and go, hey, you got a problem. Look the other way. You got a problem. You guys all have a problem. You have a massive problem. It's a universal problem. Everybody on earth has a problem. You're utterly helpless. Doesn't make any difference how much money you make. Doesn't how many people you, you, you lord over at your job as a manager. Doesn't matter how popular or how beautiful you are, you're utterly helpless. That's the good news, right? It's not good news. But God. But God. Merry Christmas. Right? But God what? But God what? Well, look back to the text. But God showed his great love to us. He showed his love. All that stuff before the but God was there. Brokenness and sin and deficit and spiritually bankrupt and you can't fix yourself. You're a wreck. You got a problem. You said it to each other. But God shows his great love in response to that. Now I don't know about you, but if you make me mad and you disappoint me, I have a hard time showing great love to you. I mean, don't laugh at me. Don't leave me hanging up here, man. I'm not the only one. The rest of you guys aren't like super holy. 
Okay? It's not the natural instinct is to be nice to someone who's busted up and jacked up. But God shows his great love. We just came out of one of the most intense, heated, ugly, controversial, epic election cycles in the history of America. And, it, and listen, it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on. It doesn't make any difference if you like who won, if your person won or not, or whether you like it or not, there's something we can all agree on. We can all agree that no matter whether it's Democrat or Republican, no matter who wins, it seems as though politicians have this nasty little habit of promising a bunch of stuff, y'all should start cheering, right? But they don't deliver on it. They don't. It doesn't seem that they could pull off what they promise. It's just it's lip service, right? Blah, 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 blah. Listen, don't raise your hand because I don't want to start any fights, but if your guy won, you're going to get some blah, blah, blah. I don't care who you are. It doesn't matter if you're a Trump guy, or a Hillary guy, or if you're an Obama. It don't matter. There's always blah, blah, blah. Let me just give you a little information that might be helpful. Okay? I'm not a Barack Obama guy. But our nation's problem is not his. He's had a lot of presidents leading up to him. It's all of us. You know what the problem is? Listen up. We're all utterly helpless. That's the problem. That's the problem. We need some help, right? How often do you run into someone who's a, uh, I say what I mean and I mean what I say kind of guy? Not too often, right? Not too often. One of the things that we struggle with in this world is character, isn't it? There's not a lot of people that you run into that say what they mean and mean what they say and you can count on it, right? Not too often, but that's who God is. See, that's who God is. So, so when God gives you his lip service, let's just say, and, and he says things all throughout the Bible about how much he loves you. I love you, I love you, I love you. Here's one, Jeremiah 31.3 says that, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. Is this more blah, blah, blah? Is this more lip service from yet another unreliable source? Well, I would offer you this. No, it's not. Because in your brokenness, he loved you. And listen, he showed his great love for you. He showed it. How many spouses out there are longing for the day that their husband or wife stops talking about how much they, are, they love them and start showing them how much they are loved? How, how many? Come on now, don't clap. If they're here, don't clap. But you know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, I've watched Enchanted. How will they know? Right? Come on now. You know. And she starts singing and dancing, and all the squirrels are in need of that too. They need to know how much they're loved. And everything in all of creation is screaming out, I need to know, because we need to see something. We need proof of this love. And God showed his great love for us by sending Christ everlasting, unfailing love, he says. Do you know that 800 years before the first Christmas Eve, this Christ child was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah. In, Pro in Isaiah chapter 9, uh, starting in verse 6, I'm going to read you just a couple of verses. I'm talking about everlasting, unfailing love. I'm talking about a love that's for forever. It started way back when. It's going to go forever. You know what I'm saying? It's not just lip service. It's real. 800 years before the stable. 800 years before before the Virgin Mary, 800 years before shepherds and wise men and, and all that stuff. The prophet Isaiah speaks of this child and he says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. And he will rule with fairness and justice from the, fr from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. Listen, the passionate commitment of the Lord will make this happen. See, it's the passionate commitment. 
What's another word for that? Love. He has this passionate, committed love for you that was started way, way back and proven on Christmas Eve, right? Proven. God's great, passionate, committed love for us is shown in the sending of His Son. It's not just a bunch of talk. And the world is filled with people who talk, 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 but don't deliver. But we serve a God who delivers on His Word. Right? And He sends His Son to show you that what He said about you is real. Amen? So God sends His Son. Okay, uh, but why? Why does God send His Son? Well, let's just look back. That's true, but let's look back at the text. What, is, what, is that te what does that one verse say? But God showed His lo great love for us by sending His Son Christ to what? To die. He sends him to die, the sent son, as a sacrifice. And see, this is where the passionate, committed love of God for you is at its peak. This is where it burns the brightest. Someone, listen up, someone has to pay. See, we're, we're all utterly helpless. We're all sinners. We've all failed. We all make mistakes. We all fall short of the glory of God, and someone has to pay. When someone commits a crime out here, they have to pay, right? No one should get off scot-free, right? And so we have broken God's law, all of us, universally. You got a problem, and someone's got to pay. And so here comes Jesus to the rescue. This is a tough one, but I have a lot of kids. <clears throat> and, and this church has a lot of kids. And a lot of kids are, man, they've just been popping out like crazy. <laughs> and there's more on the way. <clears throat> None of you pregnant ladies get anywhere near my wife where it's on, buddy. <laughs> you see me smiling? Huh. <clears throat> but listen, I've been to the hospital to visit the kids, you know, and if you've had the joy of, 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 of being a dad and looking through the nursery window at, your, at this newborn child, anyone ever have that? That's a joy, right? I can't say that any of us would be terribly excited about the fact that as we look through the window at our brand new child, that we knew that he had a death sentence. That the reason why your baby was born was to die. It's not fun, is it? That will be very, very difficult indeed. But that was the intention of Jesus Christ. That's what God had planned for him. Isaiah 53.10 said it was God's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. First Peter 1.20, God chose him, Jesus Christ, as your, your, I'm speaking to you individually, your ransom long before the world began. Hebrews 12.2 says, because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross. How many people think that going on the cross and being crucified would be much joy? Anyone volunteer for that one? I wouldn't want to. So how can God's Word say that it was joy, that he, en he endured the cross because of the joy set before Him? What is this joy that He speaks of? What is this torture that He goes through now because it's going to be worth it? What is this torture? Do you know that there's only one thing in all of the entire creative order that has changed since Jesus Christ? He, is, he was Lord then, He is Lord now. He was Creator then, He's still Creator now. He was Sustainer then, He's Sustainer now. There's only one thing that has changed since Jesus came. You. That's it. The only reason that He came was to die for you. That's it. That's all He came for, was to die 
for you. He says, the joy set before me, the joy that awaits, that what I'm about to do on the cross is worth it because something good is on the way. I, I, I think it's a worthwhile venture that I do this because something down the road is going to be worth what I'm doing. And the only thing that has changed since that day is you. You, listen loved ones, you are the joy that awaited Jesus Christ. You. You. Okay? And so... Not only does Jesus say, no one can take my life from me, but I lay it down willingly. Our New Living Translation says, I will sacrifice it voluntarily. So we know why he did it, but let this be an encouragement. If you're a believer already, if you've bent the knee to Jesus Christ and you're actively involved in ministry, I want to use this as a side note encouragement for the believer. When I just say this, difficult, painful sacrifices always lead to future blessings and we know this because of Jesus Christ on the cross very painful in the moment very awesome in the future and so painful difficult sacrifice will lead to future blessing 1 Corinthians 15 58 says so my dear brothers and sisters be strong and immovable Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing, look at someone say nothing. nothing. Say it again louder. Come on, like you mean it. Nothing. nothing you, listen, nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Nothing you ever do for the Lord is useless. So let me encourage you this way. Seasons of long and hard serving in ministry, they're a sacrifice. But let me encourage you, it's no matter what you do, if you're in here on the soundboard, or you're playing music, or you're preaching, or you're teaching kids, or you're cleaning bathrooms, or you're holding a sign, or you're directing traffic, whatever it is that you do, every single bit of it has a purpose. It's not useless, but it's hard, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Listen, when little kids like this little, look at, look at little Lucas right there. When, 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 when we, listen, if you guys will serve enthusiastically like it says, and you build a family of faith that is an awesome environment where he wants to come and spend his young years growing up, and he wants to be here, and the ladies in the back are teaching him about Jesus, and we pray for him, and one day he bends the knee to Jesus and says yes, and we baptize him, it will be worth it. It will be worth it. And so for all of you that feel like I serve, no one thanks me, my thanks is not here. Listen, your thanks is not from here. Your thanks is not from me. Your thanks is not from anyone's parents because some kid got saved. No, your thanks will be from the Lord. And everything you do has purpose and it's useful. It's useful. So I just want to take a second and just say this. If you are part of this family and what you see before you, everybody, for those of you that didn't have anything to do with this, I love you and I'm glad you're here, but just think. People did this. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart from, for everybody who's been actively involved every day, every week, year after year, serving, 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 and usually with no thank you. But here's your thank you. It means nothing coming from me, but thank you very, very much. God's passionate commitment of love for us is shown by Jesus being sent that glorious evening in Bethlehem, a quiet evening, very much like this one, when the Christ child is born in the stable to the Virgin Mary, born with a purpose, to die. To die. He must die. To die. Why must he die? Why must he die? Well, you just look back at the text that we've been studying, and it's clear, just like God's Word is, but God loved us and so he sends his son to die for us, for the sinners. That's why he dies. 
He dies for all of us. Remember that stuff when I first began speaking just a few moments ago? All the stuff prior to the but God? The, the utterly helpless stuff? The brokenness and the sin and the deficit and the debt that you have before a holy and perfect God that you can't pay? That you can't fix the problem? All that stuff. All that stuff. That's why he dies. For us. The Bible would put it this way. No one is righteous, not even one. No one does good, not even a single one. All have turned. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us fail in many ways. We are dead in sin. But since God's passionate commitment of love is so powerful, in your direction, He sends His Son to die for all of us who are broken sinners, failing and falling short. That means He sent Him, listen, for you. That means God sent Him for you. That means God sent Him for you. And for you. And for you. And for you, Mike. And for you. And for you. And for you. And for you, my baby. For you, Patrick. For you, Nick. He sent Jesus for you, Cindy. He sent him for you, Mike. He sent him for Katie. Now think about it for a second. Don't, don't yell it out loud. I want you to do me a favor. This is probably not too commonly practiced, but I want you to think for a moment. Of, don't say it out loud. If it brings tears to your eyes, it's, it's okay. Because godly sorrow leads to repentance. What's the worst thing you ever did? Just think about it for a second. Think about it. The worst, most corrupt and ugly thing you ever did. He came for that. He came for that. God's word says, if you confess your sin to him, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you of wickedness. Jesus Christ came for you, listen, personally. Forget everyone else in this parking lot right now. He came for you. And he came for that sin. He came for that sin. I can't describe it more clearly than God's word can. And it says in Romans 3.25, with clarity, you ready? with clarity for God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin listen loved ones the sacrifice that's it there's nothing else there's only one it's Jesus Christ the Lord and he came to pay for your sin your greatest your ugliest, the one that makes you think you're not worthy of glory. He came for that. He came for the one that has been keeping you out of church for all these years because you don't think you're worthy of his love. And no, you're not worthy of his love and neither am I. But he came to forgive you of that sin. You've been pardoned. That's, yeah, yeah. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. Listen, you've got to make this personal. It's your thing. Do you believe that he did it for you? Christmas is the portion of God's passionate commitment of love for you, for people like you and I that just simply highlights the shepherds and the angels and the virgin and the manger and the human birth of Jesus Christ. But it's just one part of the whole story. God sent his son as, and sacrificed him as a savior. So, so let's do this. I want to call the worship band up, please, right now. <clears throat> okay, all attention here, not on me, but what I'm saying to you. Okay? I'm telling you right now, that you, I don't know what your grandma told you, and I don't know what your mommy told you, and I don't know what Google told you, but you just heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God at work saving 
anyone who believes. If you believe that you are broken and that you need a Savior and that Jesus Christ is God's Son who willingly died to pay the price for the most wicked of your sins, if you say yes to that and thank you to that, listen, Christmas 2016 will be the greatest day of your life and you can make that change right now. Right now you can do it, and you can change your eternity forever. Listen, too many people are beating around the bush with Jesus. you got to make a choice. You cannot leave him hanging out there. He is too awesome to be hanging. You have to make a choice. And if you've been like beating around the bush for all these years, trying to figure it out, trying to figure it out, searching for something, and your soul is not satisfied, and you're like a cat chasing its tail, never satisfied, never satisfied, never satisfied. Here's the next thing doesn't satisfy me. I'm still grumpy. I'm still miserable. I have no fulfillment. I feel no purpose. I need help. I am utterly helpless, Lord. That's an awesome place to be. And you can say yes to Jesus right now, and it'll change your eternity. So unashamed, if you want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your eternity right now in front of everyone, anyone here from our church, would we be exci excited and thrilled if someone say yes? Would they be embarrassed in any way? Or would we love them like crazy, right? We would love them. We would wrap our arms around you. Let's have some music playing or something, right? Let's get some mood. Right? Uh, we would love you. We would welcome you into our family. Listen, that's the gospel right there. You just heard it. You are broken and busted and you can't fix it. But Jesus can fix it right now. And I can't tell you what it's going to feel like to be a Christian. How your life will change as a result. That's something that's personally going to be experienced by you. Because my salvation is a little bit different than yours. So I wish I could tell you what it's going to be like. So if you come up here right now and we can pray for you that it's going to be this, well, it's not, I, I can't do that. I don't know. I don't know. But I do know you'll be changed forever. If you want to do that right now, just, 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 just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. <laughs> awesome. There's two. Praise the Lord, right? Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else want to just say yes to Jesus finally? Right now. Anyone? I saw some tears. Don't, don't, don't stifle the Holy Spirit. If he's working on you and you want to be saved, awesome. That's what I'm talking about right there. Come on. That's it right there. Don't say no to him. Don't say no to him. This is an awesome chance. It's an awesome chance. We got three people right here right now. Okay, listen. If you're a believer, let's pray for them right now. Would you, would you do me a favor, loved one? Would you come here? Would you come here, please? Come here, sweet girl. Come here. Come up. Come on up. Come on. You too? Come on. There we go. There's another. Come on. There's another. Come on. Let's pray. Would you guys pray with me? Can you stand? Let's honor the Lord here, man. See, let's honor what he's done right here, right now, tonight. Awesome. Awesome. Right here. Awesome. Awesome. Do you know, I don't know, but you guys are a little quiet. There's angels that are partying in heaven right now. Awesome. Let's let them hear us, right? Let's pray. Would you guys pray with me for these beautiful people right here? Lord God, we just thank you for the clarity of your word. We thank you for the power of, of the gospel that is able to change lives for eternity. Lord, I thank you for all four of these beautiful, beautiful people, Lord. People that you love so much. People that you would willingly lay down your life for. That you would become a servant, that they might become princes and princesses. Awesome, God. Awesome. Thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit through your word tonight. Your promise is that your word will never return void, that it always accomplishes what it sets out to do. And yet again, we see it four times right here. And Lord, we just love you and we thank you. Lord, I just want to give these, these four people the opportunity to just simply start the relationship right now. You already know their heart. It's already started. But we want to be faithful to your word. And your word tells us that if we would just confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is our Lord and believe in our heart, that God raised him from the dead, that we would be saved. And so as, well, I just want to give these four people an opportunity to just say it. And I just want to encourage all four of you right now to be bold. Just say, Jesus, you are my Lord. Six people, come on now. Let's hear it. All of you, if Jesus is your Lord, just say it out loud. Jesus is my Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, we are so thankful for the work that you've done here tonight. Thank you for this awesome opportunity to worship you. Now, Lord, there's a, there's a complacency in the church. There's a, there's a lethargy in the body of Christ, but we don't want to experience that here. 
We want to experience excitement and passion. And we want to worship. We want to come into your presence right now and worship the King who is worthy of our worship. So Lord, I pray that you would help us to focus right now. Take our eyes off of the departure. Take our eyes off of anything else that we might have planned. Because you are worthy of our praise. And we want to worship you right now. Not for just what you've done here tonight, but for who you are. God of all gods. King of kings. The Lord of our lives. Lord, we dedicate the rest of our night to you. And we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Give it up for these people. Awesome. Awesome. Now, let's, let's worship the Lord.